So the next stage of integration is dealing with definite integrals. Um, now there's a particular need for definite integrals uh, in order to find the area under a curve. Okay, but we're not going to cover that too much until the third unit. But we're just going to look at kind of the process behind doing that just now, just so we can get familiar with it. Um, before, as I say, in unit three, we'll actually look at the context of it. Um, so a brief um, word on it, it's, it's basically going to allow us to find the area under a curve. So what we're going to do here is we're basically going to integrate and we're going to substitute in some values. Okay, what that will do ordinarily uh, in a context, as I say, is find the area under a curve. Now, finding the area under a curve is important for a number of things. Um, it allows us to find, um, depending on the graph that we're doing, okay, these are not just always going to be X and Y graphs, but it will allow us to find... Um, the velocity um, of a particle or a car, whatever it is, uh, if we can find the area under curve. It's actually also used quite a lot in uh, pharmaceuticals. Um, I don't know much more uh, than that, but I know it's quite a useful thing. So any of you want to get into medicine, it's quite an important uh, process to be able to follow. Okay, But as I say, we'll cover more of that later on. But generally what we're going to have is, obviously we've got these functions at the moment. We've got these functions f of x, whatever it is. Okay, But if we were to draw it, it would look something like this. Okay. What we're looking for when we're finding the um, definite integral um, is basically the area covered underneath that curve, between the curve, basically, and the x-axis, okay? And then um, closed off, basically, by two values, a and b, okay? So the shaded area, the area between the curve and the x-axis, is found by integrating the equation of the line of x. So just, being, just doing what we've been doing so far. And then what we do with that, obviously, we get an equation once we've done the integration. And then we substitute in each value at the end, so a and b here, into the, the same equation, but basically two different uh, equations, okay, two different versions of it. Uh, and then we find the difference between those resulting answers, and that would give us the area under the curve, okay? So we represent it something like this. So the two values now come in at the top and bottom of our integrand. So in, in, in terms of this, the symbol that we use, you're going to see now, well, when you want in a definite integral, you're going to see a number at the top and the bottom of that. And these will relate to, as I say, the kind of the enclosed interval of the area that we're trying to find, okay? If we didn't have them, uh, or if we just looked between zero and some other number, okay, it'd be much, much bigger. So it's it's a specific interval that we're looking at, and it'll be defined in the question, or as we get further through, we'll actually want to find them specifically. Um, and then, as I say, do the integral, okay? That'll basically be f of x uh, in terms of the capital. And what we do is then we substitute in those at the ends of those intervals into those two individual equations, and then take them away to find the area underneath. Okay, but just, just now, we're just going to focus on the kind of the process behind it, the numbers behind it. We're not going to worry too much about the context in which it's used. We'll come back to this in Unit 3, though, so it's worth just having a wee, a wee brief look at it. Okay? So because this is a definite integral, okay, and we know kind of precisely, and that's the idea of it, we know precisely what the, uh, the value is, okay, we don't need to add the plus C at the end. So from now on, it's if whenever you're finding a definite integral, in other words, if you have a number here and here that you're trying to find, the definite integral of okay you don't need your plus c okay so don't write that in it pardon me else if you, if you leave it in there it's going to be at the end of your answer and we don't want that what we're trying to get at the end of this uh, this whole process is just a number we don't want a plus c floating around as well okay so you don't have to do the constant at the end of all of this uh, you just leave it as is okay so as i say the questions will quite look something like this <clears throat> so same kind of idea as before we're trying to find the integral of 3x squared minus 2x with respect to x but we're wanting it in the interval from one, two, three. Okay, so we don't need to really worry about them until the end. There's a little bit of kind of notation you need to be aware of here, but you don't need to worry about that until the end. Okay, you need to work out the integral first, and then we're going to substitute these numbers in. Okay, so same as before, we need to basically work out if it's in integratable form, okay, which it is, so we can just go ahead and integrate, right? What most people do, or what certainly I do, is write the integral basically in these square brackets. If you write them in these square brackets, and then you put the one and the three on the right hand side at the top and the bottom of those brackets. Okay, it just indicates, it just tells you that there's one more stage left to do. Okay, so 3x squared integrated becomes 3x cubed divided by 3, and 2x integrated becomes 2x squared divided by 2. But obviously, we can simplify these down. And this is more important to actually uh, simplify these down because obviously now we're going to be using this version of the equation. And if we're going to use it, we want it in its very simplest form. Okay, so 3x cubed divided by 3 can be simplified to just x cubed. And likewise, with 2x squared over 2, it can be simplified to just x squared. So that gives us an equation, x cubed minus x squared. And what we're going to do with that equation is we're going to substitute a 3 in, first of all, work out what that is, and then substitute a 1 in, and then we're going to take those two away. 
Okay, so something like this. We're basically going to do 3 cubed minus 3 squared minus 1 cubed minus 1 squared. Okay, so the three substituted ins, first of all, work out what that is, and then take away the one substituted into that same equation. Okay, so work these out individually. Okay, 3 cubed is 27, 3 squared is 9. 1 cubed is 1, 1 squared is 1. So it's going to be 27 minus 9, and then we're going to take away 1 minus 1. 27 minus 9 is 18. 1 minus 1 is 0, so it's 18 minus 0, which is just 18. Right, at this stage, that's all we need to know. Okay, we can leave our answer like that. But obviously, when we get further down the line and we're dealing with areas under curves, okay, we're going to need a little bit more than just an 18. We're going to need a unit. But just, just now, when it's nothing to do with areas under curves, we're just trying to find a definite integral. 18 is all we need. Okay, so moving on to the second one. Okay, so same kind of idea. Okay, it's just a different integral this time. It's a different equation. Okay, and we have different uh, have a different interval. So we're going from minus one to one. So notice that the lowest number is always on the bottom, highest number is always on the top. Okay, so if you had to write this, the lowest number is on the bottom, the highest number is on the top. Okay, we're working out the integral from of three x minus one to the power of four with respect to x. Okay, so this is in integratable form. We just got to remember that this is obviously the chain rule. Okay, so all these different contexts, so whether it be sine, integrating sine, integrating cos whether it be chain rule, whether it be in non-integratable form, we have to deal with all these things before we actually get to the stage of doing the definite integral, okay? So this integrated is 3x minus 1 to the power of 5 divided by 5, but also divided by the derivative of what's in the brackets, in other words, the coefficient of x, so divided by 3 as well, okay? So simplify this as much as you can before such a point as you substitute in the values. So it's just 3x minus 1 to the power of 5 divided by 15. Right, a lot of people like to write the 50, uh, kind of 1 15th at the start, um, just to remind them what to do. Um, so I've done that here, but we're substituting in, in the, as I say, into two separate equations with the, uh, the difference between them, um, with one substitute into one of them and minus one substitute into the other. So we're finding a 15th of basically three times by one minus one to the power of five. That's the first equation. And then we're taking away the same idea, but with minus one substituting this time. So a 15th of three times by minus one, minus one to the power of five. So just be careful with the minus one there. Okay, working that through, 3 times by 1 is 3, take away 1 is 2, 2 to the power of 5 is 32, and then we want a 15th of that, so let's do 32 for 15. So take your time working that out, there's no rush, okay? Uh, and then taking away, same idea, 3 times by minus 1 is minus 3, if you take 1 to 1, you get minus 4, and minus 4 to the power of 5 um, is, oh, sorry, uh, is minus 1024, okay? <laughs> Uh, we're finding a 15th of that, so we're dividing by 15. And then we're just obviously working this out in full, okay? If it was non-calculator, this works out nicely because they're both 15ths, okay? Uh, so in which case you add the tops because it's take away a minus. So we're adding 32 and 1,024, which gives us 1,056. Divided by 15 equals 70 and 2 fifths. It would be fine like that if it was in its simplest form, uh, but it's not because they both divide by 3, okay? So 70 and 2 fifths fit is all we're looking for there okay so not much more uh, or just a couple of extra stages on from uh, what we were looking at before in terms of your integration you're actually using it so you're substituting in something afterwards and then you narrow it down into just one number so you've got to a couple of things to be aware of you don't need your plus c as long as there's numbers on here as long as you're dealing with doing the into, uh, integral over an interval okay you don't need a plus c at the end of it all um, and then you've just got to take your answer and put it in its simplest form Okay.